Hey everybody, it's Tom Collins uh, here at uh, AHA Denver 2012. Um, I'm the co-founder of blogpause.com and I'm pretty sure that's why AHA invited me to speak on this topic. Um, we're a community of pet lovers. We're engaged in blogging and social media and uh, we, we are also helping each other learn about uh, the ever-changing tools that we have for um, gathering and sharing our words and pictures and video online. But as I was getting ready to uh, talk with you today, I, I had major flashbacks. Um, I've been doing online research professionally since 1978. Uh, you may say, wait a minute, Tom, the internet was invented in the 90s. And yes, the internet as we now use it uh, came to be in the 90s, the, the old Netscape browser wars with Microsoft and so on. Uh, but in, uh, at the beginning of an earlier career of mine as a lawyer, um, I worked at the United States Court of Appeals in Chicago, and they were doing a pilot program with, for what is now the LexisNexis uh, research tool. And so we got, we were uh, experimental rats, I guess. Um, and we, uh, we got to go down to the library and call in a special number um, on a telephone, old style telephone, um, wait for the right kinds of beeps, hang the thing up, make sure we got a connection, and we were off and running at the blinding speed of 1,200 baud. Um, if any of you know what that is, it's a tiny fraction of the megabits that we uh, send back and forth nowadays. Um, but this program um, was made available to a bunch of uh, eager young lawyers free to us. And so uh, we sat there, squinted in front of the little screen, watched the bright green letters come onto the dark green background one line at a time, and we were hooked. And for the next 25 years or so, I practiced appellate litigation, which is essentially a research and writing um, career. And, uh, and so I was a heavy user for a long time, um, right up into when, uh, when everything went uh, World Wide Web and graphical user interfaces and so on. Um, I changed from that career to a consulting practice uh, with the legal profession in knowledge management and information design. So essentially, I became the dealer. And, uh, and yes, I, I'm Tom Collins, and I am an online research addict. So as part of my uh, consulting practice, I took some uh, coursework and learned about a concept that is big in the educational field called digital literacy. You can see the definition, digital liter literacy involves using digital technology to locate, evaluate, use, and create information. And for our topic today, we're going to focus on locating information, which as an online user you know uh, with Google is usually pretty easy. Um, but then evaluating that information to decide whether it is reliable is not necessarily so easy. And what I've learned over the years is that most research problems can be greatly assisted by asking yourself two simple questions. When you try to figure out where you should look for information, ask yourself, who cares? When I say to, who cares, who cares about the topic that you're interested in? Who cares about the quality of the information that they gather? And who cares about sharing it with you? Now, I think of uh, information sources uh, you can be broken down into three basic categories on the internet these days. Um, one of them would be what I call a hobbyist. And I don't mean that in a negative way. If you think about uh, a, a model railroad enthusiast or a Civil War reenactor, uh, I've spent, spent time on the Gettysburg battlefield with Civil War reenactors who know more about the history of that battle than almost any uh, university history professor. So it isn't the fact that they um, are hobbyists uh, or not professional researchers that, uh, that, that, but when you get into who cares, they care. They're passionate about that topic. 
Another would be a business or professional. Um, and in, in the pet care area, I'm probably thinking of um, your veterinarian. Um, if you're looking for uh, nutritional information, um, a, a pet food company or uh, somebody who is doing research that matters to them, they care about that information. And the other one would be larger organizations. AHA is a great example. Uh, they care about getting quality information and putting it online for you to get at. Um, our organization blog pods, veterinary schools. The other big question is who says so? When you actually look at the information to decide if it is reliable, who is it that's saying it? We talked about um, differentiating between uh, a, a resource online uh, based on how much they care about the quality of the information. If you take a look at the information itself, um, what are the qualifications of the person? Uh, are, do they have formal training or they have, have they been uh, driven to study uh, a topic on their own? What are their motivations? Is it purely a profit motivation? Are they selling information? Or do they have a passion for the topic? Is that their motivation? Are they, uh, or do they have an ax to grind? That's a big danger zone. If you find somebody who's uh, writing about a topic in an angry tone, um, you need to question what their motivation is. And then the big one for me from my legal background is prove it. What do they give you to prove that what they say is reliable information? Do they give you citations to great resources? On the internet, that to me means links. If somebody makes a statement and they tell you they read about it so, uh, on, on, a, on a resource and they don't give you a direct link to that resource or at least enough information so that you can go find the resource, that's questionable. And that gets us into who else says so. If somebody uh, makes a statement on the internet, um, give you, gives you a generalized uh, bit of information, and you can't find anybody else who says the same thing, you need to question that information. So let's look at some examples. Now, I, I'm embarrassing myself a little bit because I, I had the privilege of spending some time uh, earlier this afternoon in Dr. Nancy Kay's um, presentation where she looked at a very similar um, bunch of issues from the veterinarian's point of view. Uh, and I forgot to put, I actually had it in my head, but I forgot to put a link to her blog, Speaking for Spot, up here. Um, on Blog Pause, we have over 1,000 registered members. We have uh, 5,000 plus people in our Facebook community and almost 10,000 on Twitter. So I didn't pick these people, and I, don't, I'm, I know I'm going to offend a whole bunch of them, um, because of who they are, I tried to give you some quick examples of the range of stuff that people are writing about pets, related to pets, on, on blogs. The first one is the happy litter box. If you need to know some information about uh, cat litter, um, Caroline Golan, our co-founder, is a great resource for that. Paw Curious is written by uh, Dr. Jessica Vogelsong, who is a vet. She writes on general pet healthcare topics. And I'll skip down Dr. Patrick Mahaney's blog. Um, he focuses on pet acupuncture and traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. Two very different perspectives, uh, but great resources if that's what you're looking for. Um, the uh, Boulder Dog blog up here is uh, written by, um, I'm going to blank. Oh, Deborah uh, Flick. Um, she's uh, right here in Colorado, and she has a, a background in uh, human psychology, but writes about dog behavior issues. Great resource. Blog posts full of links to other great resources. And the bottom one here is the adventures of Snot Face Critter. Um, Snot Face is a ferret, and uh, Stephanie writes about uh, general issues, posts great pictures. Um, but I put hers up there as a, an example. If, uh, if she's not writing about pet care as such, uh, she is a person who's passionate about ferrets. And if you have a question, I bet you she can hook you up with the great information that you're looking for. 
So that, that goes to the point if, if the, the blog you're, uh, you're on doesn't have the information you're looking for, ask. A blog is an interactive tool. Now this is another um, example of the who cares. Um, this is the website and several pages within it of our veterinarians' uh, practice. Um, <laughs> their tagline is caring people, caring for animals. Who cares? Who cares more about your pets and their health care? Who knows more about it than your veterinarian? Uh, it, this is an AHA accredited practice, they, uh, which is another uh, way of, of evaluating the information that you're looking for. Who um, certifies these folks as qualified? Uh, but you can follow um, our vets on Twitter, Facebook. They have a great resource section. Um, I use this one because the little guy over there, Chester, is our hound dog, uh, a couple of weeks ago had an ear infection. When I was in um, having him treated, uh, the doctor was able to pull up this video in the examining room. He showed me what to do. He showed me a video about it. And when I got home, I could just go to their website and watch that again to make sure I was doing things correctly. Um, so. And one of the great things about this is that uh, that part of their information is on the public side of their site. There's also a login portal where I can upload information, look at my dogs, my, uh, our, our pets' um, uh, medical records, and so on. Uh, but a lot of the information that they share is right out there on the public side of their site. So then on to uh, examples of organizations where you can find quality information. And by the way, the, I, I will figure out a way to make this slideshow available to you, but by attending Dr. K's session earlier, I have two more pages of great resources that I can give you links to. So I feel a blog post coming on. Um, the examples, uh, AHA's Healthy Pet website, uh, our blog uh, community site where you can hook up with other uh, pet parents, find people with uh, a pet or a species like yours. Um, a brand new site is the Human Animal Bond Research Initiative. It is uh, based at Purdue University and funded by the American Pet Products Association. Uh, and they are going to be um, putting on uh, thousands of pages of research on human animal bond issues. Um, another university site is the Indoor Pet uh, Initiative at Ohio State, um, where uh, uh, Tony, Dr. Tony Huffington, I think is his name, um, is, uh, ha has been a leader in the indoor cat initiative, and they have expanded that to include dogs and will be going on to other species. Um, Colorado State has a great uh, website with lots of information about cancer in pets. Um, one that you might not think of and, uh, is, is pet health insurance companies. Um, Embrace, I know from, uh, from previous work that Purina Care have, uh, both have great libraries full of pet health resources. Um, American Kennel Club, the uh, Cat Care Society. Uh, so these are organizations that have, they, they care about animals um, and they, they meet the other test of uh, who says so because you have a lot of reassurance that because of who they are and the value they place in their reputation for providing quality information, um, that, they, that what you find there is going to be valuable. And it uh, appears that I may be done a little early, um, but that's fine. I want to thank AHA for the opportunity, and I hope the, uh, the live streaming has, has gone really well. Thanks.